This binding is a square back case binding, but what's special about it is we'll follow the instructions of Peter Vahan on his uh, Bradle or German case binding. We need two boards, uh, a piece of strong paper, some end papers. I've made up the end papers already. They're made end papers and you can follow the made end paper video to see how these are made. Some Rami band for the sewing support. Some linen thread, fairly thin because we don't want much swell in the spine. And quickly wax it. And the manila card is for punching the sewing holes. And I almost forgot the book cloth for the covering material. The text block that I'll be binding is a translation of Der Pressbengel by Ernst Collin. It's been translated by Peter, Peter Verhan, whose instructions we're going to follow for this binding. And he even suggests it in his instructions as a good example uh, to use as a practice binding. It's a four sheet uh, section book, five sections, plus the end papers, which I'll sew on. I'll put links to Peter's instructions and to his PDF of this text block in the description of the video. I'm going to sew this book on three tapes for support. I've got a video on sewing on tapes if you need more uh, details on that. The tape is going to be unraveled, so it needs to be a, a loose weave tape of cotton or linen, or as you'll see, Rami band is perfect. So I'll evenly space the tapes and mark either side, and then I'll transfer that to the manila card template, which I'll use to punch the holes. The kettle stitches are 10 millimeters in from the ends. What makes the bradle or bridle binding special is the use of a piece of paper to connect the spine stiffener to the uh, cover boards. You'll see this later after we've sewn the text block. I especially like this approach as it, it gives you a lot of control over the gap between the spine stiffener and the, the boards, which is essential for the book opening nicely for a square back binding. Thus, I think this approach to a square back case binding is by far the best. Peter's article is really nice in that it's um, generic. It, it could be used for a, a rounded and back book as well. However, maybe for a beginner that might make his article a little bit more complex. What I'm demonstrating here is specifically for a square back binding. I'm going to transfer the markings on the template to the other side. This is important for the rear end paper so that I'm um, punching the holes with the, with the made paper vertical so that I don't have um, any chance of punching through uh, the decorated paper.
I won't use the sewing frame today because I am trying to make this project accessible to people without much equipment. And plus the Rami band is very stiff and it, it'll stand up straight and it's easy enough to sew on without a sewing frame. I know a lot of people find the music very distracting and thus I do no music versions now of all my videos. However, I always bind with music on whenever possible. Uh, I particularly love the Goldberg variations and I really like uh, John's classical guitar version. So if you're listening to the music, I hope you're enjoying it. I'll quickly tip on the first and last sections and the end papers. Trim up the tapes to a bit over an inch long. glue up the spine and because we're not rounding the book I can glue over the tapes just make sure they're well centered before you do that Peter suggests using uh, scrap marbled paper or paste paper to make end bands. So I'll quickly do that. I'll just use a um, 
piece of hemp cord as the core. This is actually a major oops moment for me because uh, I haven't trimmed the text block and I'm not going to realize this uh, until too late. So I'm going to put the headbands on and then I'm going to line the spine with a piece of the same paper that I'll use the, to join the uh, boards together. So it's a, um, a fairly strong paper. It's not particularly heavy. Uh, I think it's about 80 GSM. It's uh, a paper called uh, Permalife, which has a 25% cotton content. Now I'm going to fray out the cords. I'm just going to show how strong this Rami band is. No matter how hard I try, I can't tear it. But if I put it in water, it uh, quickly becomes soft and can be frayed out. So I'm going to uh, put some water on the bits of um, tape that are sticking out from the spine of the book. I'll let that soak in and then I'll fray that out and then glue those, the frayed out tapes to the outside of the paste downs. I'm going to use paste to glue these down, which means I'm going to let it dry overnight. I'll put blotters around it and put a bit of light weight on it and then just leave it overnight. I've realized by this point that I've forgotten to trim up the text block, but I'm, I'm going to leave it till the next day. I, uh, the next day I trimmed up the, I peeled off the end bands, trimmed it in the guillotine, and then cut new end bands and, and uh, glued those on. Now the thickness of the text block is six millimeters and the boards are two millimeters. Now the width of the spine stiffener, I'm going to use the width of the text block plus one and a half times the board thicknesses, which comes to nine millimeters. So here I'm cutting the nine millimeter spine stiffener. And then I'm going to cut a piece of paper to connect everything up. And it's going to be the width of the spine stiffener plus 60, 60 millimeters. Now, um, 69 millimeters is a bit of a pain in the neck to deal with, so I'm just going to round that up to 70 millimeters. I'm going to cut a piece of this paper 70 millimeters wide. The grain direction runs head to tail, of course. And then I'm going to draw a line down the center of this piece of paper. I'll use this line later to position the spine stiffener. Now, the height of the boards, I want the boards to extend just past the uh, end bands, so I'll just uh, measure that 
to determine the height of the boards, 214 millimeters. So I'll start by straightening an edge on each of the boards, squaring up a corner, and then cutting them to length, 214 millimeters. And I'll trim the spine stiffener to length as well. I forgot to mention that I'm using the same thickness board for the spine stiffener. Okay, sorry about my grubby drawing, but I just wanted to demonstrate we want the paper to go on the outside of the spine stiffener and then go onto the inside of the boards. So I'll start by putting the spine stiffener down the center of the piece of paper. The distance between the spine stiffener and the boards depends on the thickness of the covering material and the thickness of the boards. I'm using a fairly heavy buckram, so I'm going to go on the larger side. It's usually five to seven millimeters, so I'll go seven millimeters. I'll um, mark those that uh, distance. I'll just uh, um, use the bone folder to make it clear where the edge of the spine stiffener is and then I'll mark out seven millimeters either side of that and I'll draw a line as well just so I can position the boards easily. I like to put a bit of adhesive on both the paper and the boards um, just so I can reduce the amount of um, uh, material that's uh, got adhesive on it that's not covered. I'll use my ruler to um, line everything up along the bottom edge. Now we'll trim the fore edge of the board, so we'll put the text block in position, get the squares right, head and tail, um, push the text block back up against the spine stiffener, and then we'll carefully open it up and then mark out um, three or four millimeters, depending on your taste, uh, for the square at the fore edge. Then we'll flip the book over and do it for the other board, then remove the text block and trim the boards. And now I'll remember at the last moment to mark the uh, board so that I can put the text block back in the right way. Now it's time to cover the case, so I'll just uh, cut a piece of book cloth to roughly what I want. The 
the covering material. It's winter here at the moment and it's very dry and this uh, adhesive, the PVA is drying out really quick. I really should have used a mix, but oh well. So there's a very important step coming up here. We need to work the material, the cloth, down the edge of the board, as in this diagram. So I'm going to lay the boards onto the cloth, or one board at a time. So I'll lay the one board on, and then I'll flip it over and hold the cloth away from the second board while I use my thumb, my thumbnail, to work that cloth down along the edge of the board and into that groove. I'll swap to the bone folder in a moment. And once I've got that cloth down the edge of that board, then I'll um, smooth it down over the spine stiffener and then down into the groove against the second board. And again, I'll use my thumbnail and the bone folder to make sure that that material has worked well down into the groove. Once I've done that, I can then lay the remainder of the cloth down onto the second board. Now I'm going to trim the turn-ins and the corners and then I'll do the turn-ins. Uh, head and tail first as always. If you're unsure as to what I'm doing with these corners, I have a video just on cloth corners. I was about to start doing the turn-ins and at the last moment I decided to give it a bit of a nip in the press just to uh, make it nice and crisp. Not essential but uh, usually uh, makes things look a bit nicer. On one corner I just had a little bit too much material, so I just trimmed that up with a, a fine pair of scissors. Now it's time to case in, so we get everything, all the squares adjusted nicely. 
Now once you're happy the text block is in position, with, uh, carefully without moving the text block, um, paste out the paste down. I will swap to mix for this. Just hold the text block in place so you don't push it forward. Flip the book over, do the other side. If you do want to open the book up and just check that there's no wrinkles in the paste down, uh, put it on a board and open it like I'm demonstrating and then use a piece of rubbing down paper so that you don't rip the uh, paste downs and then just um, crisp up the shoulders with your bone folder. I'm going to give this a bit of a press now for a while. I'm going to put tins in, I don't know why I decided to do that. Uh, but just a, a piece of uh, plastic would be fine as well, just to stop the moisture transferring into the text block. Um, put the book on the edge of the board so that you don't crush the spine in the press. You just put it under some bricks as well, that would be fine. Just leave it in there for um, maybe an hour. Uh, and then put some blotters in and then put it under some lightweight, such as a brick. I like to leave books for a few hours at least, maybe even overnight like that. Uh, some people just leave them maybe an hour. And then open it up, uh, support the text block with some scraps of board and let it dry open. The moisture will have caused the paste downs to have stretched so you'll be able to see the paste downs extending past the text block. That's not desirable. It's easily fixed by uh, carefully trimming it with a knife. Just put enough pressure on just to cut the paper and not the covering material. The excess normally peels off easily. Uh, if it's giving you trouble, just use a cotton wool bud to put a little bit of moisture on it and then it'll come off it fairly easily. Worst case scenario, you use the a scalpel or the end of your knife to um, scrape any recalcitrant pieces off. And finally, I'll put a paper label on the spine. Uh, I printed out a few different sizes to uh, pick one that I liked. Um, also did a dark green and black. I think I'm going to go with the smaller font and the dark green. Once the label is dried, you can read this fun little book.